In this video, we use our knowledge of how to predict the charge on individual ions to determine or predict the chemical formulas of ionic compounds containing those ions. To predict or write down the chemical formula of an ionic compound, we first need to know the charge on the individual ions that make up that compound. And we can use, for example, the periodic table to work out the charge on many cations and anions. The next thing we need to appreciate is that unlike the ions from which they are formed, the overall compound has no net charge. Compounds have neutral charge. And so therefore, the sum of all the positive and negative charges from the cations and anions must equal zero. By way of example, let's start with an ion that we should be very familiar with by now, the Na plus sodium ion. If it comes together with the Cl minus chloride ion, what would be the chemical formula of the salt that results? The salt that forms from these two ions is sodium chloride, NaCl, and the individual ions come together in a one-to-one -one ratio. The one plus charge on the sodium ion cancels out the one minus charge on the chloride ion, and these two ions come together in a one-to-one -one ratio to make the compound neutral overall. It gets a little trickier if we've got the sodium ion coming together with, say, the sulfide ion, which has a two minus charge. The compound that forms is called sodium sulfide, but how do we work out the chemical formula for sodium sulfide? Once again, we need to get electrical neutrality, but we can see that the one plus sodium ion is not going to cancel out the two minus sulfide ion in a one to one ratio. And what we need is two lots of the one plus ion to give a total positive charge of plus two to cancel out the two minus charge on the sulfide ion. And so when these two ions come together, we need two sodiums for every one sulfur. And we write that as Na2S. Remember, we don't write the ones in chemistry, so there's no need to put a one as a subscript for the sulfur atom. When the barium two plus ion comes together with the chloride ion, the resulting compound is called barium chloride. Once again, these two ions will not come together in a one-to-one -one ratio because the Cl1 minus ion does not cancel out the charge on the two plus barium ion. And we're going to need two lots of the chloride ions to balance out the two plus charge. And we write the chemical formula as BaCl2. Again, remembering we don't write ones in chemistry, so there's no need to put a one subscript for the barium. We can simplify this process by using a method called the crisscross method in order to work out exactly how many of each ions should be represented in the chemical formula. We'll use the example of aluminium oxide to demonstrate this crisscross method, and this is about as difficult as these examples get. Aluminium oxide is formed from the aluminium 3 plus ion and the oxygen 2 minus ion. Aluminium is a metal in group 3A of the periodic table, it therefore forms the 3 plus ion. Oxygen is a non-metal in a group that is two groups in from the noble gases. So it will always form a two minus anion. So how do these two ions come together to form the compound aluminium oxide? Well, in the crisscross method, what we do is we take the magnitude of the charges and swap them over and place them as subscripts for the other element. And so we take the three from the aluminium and we make it the subscript of oxygen. And we take the two from the two minus charge of the oxygen and make that the subscript for aluminium. And we end up with the chemical formula Al2O3. So how does that work out? Well, if you end up with two aluminium ions, you've got two lots of three plus charge, which gives you a total of six plus charge in that Al2O3 structure. The total negative charge from the three O2 minus ions is six minus, which cancels out the six plus, giving overall neutrality. So this crisscross method is a really handy way of working out chemical formulas for ionic compounds. It even works when polyatomic ions are involved, but we just need to be a little mindful when we have polyatomic ions in a compound. So for example, calcium nitrate is comprised of the Ca2 plus ion and the nitrate ion, which is a polyatomic ion with an overall charge of one minus. Calcium is a metal that lies in group 2A of the periodic table and so will always form the two plus ion. Nitrate is a polyatomic ion, which at this stage, we're just going to have to remember. When we do the crisscross method, we take the two from the calcium and bring it down as a subscript for the nitrate ion. We take the one from the nitrate ion, it's an invisible one since we don't write ones in chemistry, and we bring it down as a subscript for calcium. So that we end up with one calcium 
and two lots of nitrate. And what you'll notice is when we have more than one polyatomic ion in a chemical formula, we need to put brackets around it with the subscript outside the brackets. So the ratio, one calcium to two nitrates, which we get from our crisscross methods, results in the overall formula of CaNO3,2. Let's look at another example, ammonium sulfate. The ammonium ion is a polyatomic cation that at this stage, we just have to remember, has a plus one charge with a formula of NH4+. Sulfate is another polyatomic ion, an anion in this case, having a charge of two minus. When we use the crisscross method, we're going to bring down the one from the one plus ammonium ion to serve as a subscript for the sulfate, and we're going to bring down the two from the two minus charge to serve as the subscript for ammonium. So in other words, we need two ammoniums and we need one sulfate. And again, we use brackets for polyatomic ions where we have more than one of them represented in a chemical formula. And since there is only one sulfate ion, there is no need to use brackets for the sulfate part of this formula. Now we just need to be a little careful using the crisscross method because sometimes it doesn't quite work out as we would hope. For example, magnesium sulfide. Magnesium is a group 2A metal. It will always form the 2 plus charge. The sulfide ion is derived from sulfur, which is a non-metal in group 16. It is two groups in from the noble gases. It will always form the 2 minus ion. So if we use the crisscross method here, we're going to bring the 2 from the magnesium down to the bottom of the sulfide and we're going to bring the two from the sulfide down to the bottom of magnesium. And we end up with a chemical formula of Mg2S2. Now we've already learnt that the chemical formula for ionic compounds need to be in their lowest whole number ratio. And so this is not the correct chemical formula for magnesium sulfide. We need to actually divide both subscripts by two to get them into their lowest whole number ratio. And since they come together in a one to one ratio, we get MgS. And we should have seen this from the start because the two plus ion and the two minus ion simply cancel each other out and we can write down the one to one ratio MGS formula straight away. So just be careful using the crisscross method and make sure that the chemical formula has the lowest whole number ratio of the ions or elements involved.